Now welcome to another Star Wars discussion where today I'm going to try doing something a little different. For a while now I've been meaning to do more Legends or Expanded Universe content discussing some of the books and my wife has never read anything from the Expanded Universe while I have read most but not everything from it. And so she started to read some of the books. She started with Kenobi and what we're going to try to do here is just have a discussion about it and we might try to do more of these in the future. I don't know if we'll do them here. Because if you enjoy this, we do kind of discussions all the time over on my other channel. A link to it probably in the description, maybe a card up above as well. But anyway, do be warned there will be spoilers for this book if you do want to read it someday. Because it is worth the read, and I think you would agree with that. Yes, I would. Alright, so let's begin. Tell us what you thought of Kenobi. Overall, I'm going to say I, I enjoyed the book. It wasn't a perfect read, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Interesting. I think what I find the most probably unique about Kenobi is that, I mean, going into the book, I remember thinking well, this is going to be a pretty in-depth story about Kenobi between the two films. This is going to be the definitive story of his. And it turns out to be nothing like that, which is not a, not a criticism. It's a good book, but it actually just takes place immediately after Revenge of the Sith. And it's really <laughs> barely about Kenobi is the funny part. Right. I mean, Kenobi, we don't even get anything written from his point of view except his meditation sessions. Yeah, the only time we ever get anything from Kenobi is when he's talking to Qui-Gon Jinn and Qui-Gon never responds or anything like that. He's really really just kind of talking to him. Right, there's probably maybe 10 to 15 pages from his point of view. Everything else is... Everything else is, yeah, is a, pretty much about the, the settlers. This is very much like a Western book. I mean, it, I mean right, the names, right. the way they talk. Very. Just every, and just the feel, I mean, it's a desert, you know, it does have that old, what, everything about it has a very old West feel to it, which works really well for the story. It works well for Tatooine in general, I think. Well, yeah. One thing I find interesting is, it was funny because it was, it was funny to me the fact that you get like, some glimpses of, of Kenobi in the prologue and then you don't see him for like another 15 to It is very, 50, yeah, 50, 50, yeah, 50 pages 50 or so. 50-ish pages in. Yeah, it's it, just not there. They're setting up everything else. No, like I said, the book is not really about Kenobi. I mean, it, it not that it doesn't have anything interesting about him, but it's it's not a it's strange. It's not really a Kenobi book at all. No, it's it's got kind of his impact on the area, but the story that they're telling is not exactly a Kenobi story. It's the story of a settlement on Tatooine that Kenobi just happened to be at. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of a unique way to do it because uh, you know I've talked a lot about you know how the new canon kind of handles you know, characters like Kenobi or any kind of these popular characters on Solo, whoever it might be, where they really just kind of search for stories about them that are kind of, you know, especially in the comics and the books, where they, they have these stories that just kind of end up feeling kind of meaningless. They're trying to do something with this character, even though you don't, you know, you don't have a really room to do much with the character. The best example I always give is the, the Marvel Star Wars comics, the new series, Volume 1 takes place between episodes four and five. It's about our main cast of characters and really nothing happens because you can't have anything really happen to these characters. And so what I like about this book is it kind of goes a different route. It takes it takes Kenobi and puts them in there, but it doesn't make him the main focus of the book. It makes these other characters really interesting and you know you really start to care about these other characters. All the while you get these little tidbits about Kenobi and you know is he going to be discovered and because you know he's obviously trying to be very secretive at one point they learn his name, Kenobi, and what I find interesting about that is Kenobi is kind of a common-ish name they make it sound. Oh, yeah, I, I know the Kenobis said. who live out, yeah, you know. Is he related to those Kenobis? Yeah. Maybe the other Kenobis. Which kind of answers maybe the question about the name Skywalker. I mean, that sounds like it could be a very common name in the Star Wars galaxy. Everybody always asks, well, why would you keep the name Luke Skywalker? Well, it could be the equivalent of, you know, Smith here in the United States or Johnson or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's so common of a last name that no one's going to ever think that this is any relation to that, you know, the popular Smith, like a Will Smith, maybe, for example. I found a lot of things very interesting about the story, and a lot of things that I thought would be really easy to set forward into the upcoming show to make them canon and stuff. But I, I liked I liked our, our, our cast of characters, how they were very grounded and down-to-earth. I mean, you had Annaline Caldwell and her two kids, and... They go into not just, oh, here she is, here's this. You get to know her dreams and aspirations and that she may work here at the, at the in the Oasis at Danar's claim that was left to her by her late husband and that she's thinking her kids will probably, one of them at least, will have the same fate that they're going to be here. But you learn about her dreams, that she dreamed of 
studying creatures, alien creatures in the galaxy. That was her dream, and she gave it up for her marriage and her children, and Kenobi kind of revitalizes her, meeting him and... Yeah, she kind of has a a thing for him, but he's, you know, I can't really do this, and yeah. He struggles with it, though. He definitely struggles with it. I mean, he... I wish they could have gone... I mean, granted, they don't ever give you Kenobi's perspective other than the talks, but I wish they could have had more, you know, how tempted Kenobi was to just say, Mm -hmm. you know what, I've given my life to the Jedi, and here's this woman, and I could just have something different. But he never loses his faith in in the Jedi or looking after Luke. Though you can tell... Yeah. You can tell there's temptation. Sorry, well, and you get the character of Oren Galt and his kids, and he has a thing for, for, for Annie. Annie. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he has a thing for her, and then he just he gets in over his head trying to make his big plans happen, and he gets led astray, and it's, it's kind of cool how many times Kenobi gives him a chance to like repent and change yes, his ways. Yes, exactly. That's what a Jedi would do. Over and over again, he gives him a chance. To get himself out of debt without causing trouble, to stop what he's doing, to not involve the you know, Annalene's youngest son Jay involve get, you know to keep him out of it, and every time, Galt makes the wrong decision. He does, yes. Over every... and over again, he's he's too self centered. Yes, which which kind of touches on something else. I think the book does really well. This really feels like Obi Wan Kenobi. Everything he says, everything he does, it it has a very it captures the character extremely well. And I agree, he's he's trying to help this guy almost indirectly, you could say, mm-hmm. to make the right choices. He keeps making, even bails him out, uh, you know, a few yeah. times, risking his identity to do so, you could say. He does. So, you know, it's 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 interesting to see Kenobi, again, you don't actually get his point of view, but you can, you can feel how he's trying to grapple with, you know, he wants to help people, which is why I do like that line in the, the Kenobi trailer, not to switch gears, but, you know, that is the problem of being a Jedi. You... Mm-hmm. You always want to help people. You you leave a trail. You leave clues as to you know the type of person you are. Well, and it, you know what, and it solidifies even though that Oren Galt was just he was just a bad person. Like he refu- and he refused to change. I mean, even even after getting bailed out over and over again and helped over and over again by Kenobi, this person he can't stand. He when he finds out that he's a Jedi, what is he going to do? He's immediately like, oh, I'm going to sell this guy out to the yeah. Empire. He literally just had had his life saved, and his response is, "No, nah, I'm going to sell this guy out now." It's also showing that some people are beyond saving while others are not. This he, is I mean, true. Kenobi even goes out of his way to kind of, he heals this hatred that Annaline has for the Tuscans. Yeah. He, because I mean, he tra- she yeah. lost her, her husband. Her husband to him, yeah. When she, even when she sees them, like, at one point they get, like, cornered and they're pretty much getting shot and killed like fish in a barrel. And even she can't stand it. And he yeah, asks her what best, she's yeah, feeling. One of the best parts of the book, yeah. And she's like, it's not right. And he says, good. Yeah. Because that's how you should feel. It's still life. It's still, you should never, even your enemies, you don't want to, I mean, which kind of mirrors, you know, Obi-Wan having to, you know, days before really in story or maybe weeks at that point. But, you know, he had to try to kill his best friend. You know, he didn't want to do that. And it's never right to want to kill somebody else is kind of one of the themes you get there. Mm -hmm. And it's even mirrored in the, in the Tuscans behavior because he talks to them and, you know, their their leader, uh, A Yark. Yeah. Yeah, they they talked and they find out you know that's a that's a lady. She's this is their traditions, and he 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 learns so much that they have to see things from both sides. They can't just say, well, the settlers are in the right. So he learns about their culture and he opens up. I think the settlers' eyes even to what's going on. He does, on. yeah. He's the you know he finds out that they were being for one they're being like set up by Orin. Yes. And yeah, he was kind of scamming everybody. Yeah, I'm so invested in getting people to give me money for this system, this Tuscan system. System protection. System. Yeah, he would kind of take money to have this system to protect the settlers from Tuscans, but then he would actually people who didn't want to pay, he'd yeah. dress up as Tuscans and attack them they, essentially yeah, to get them yeah, to pay. To scare them into to yeah. paying. So he's creating this, you know, I don't want to say false hate for the Tuscans because the Tuscans do do bad things. But they're you know? also getting now raided by the villagers. For things that they did not even do. Exactly. So it, it just Which kind of fuels shows their anger and hatred. Exactly. It kind of shows that circle of hatred. How you know, mm-hmm. and you know, Annalene's kind of can see through it at one point where right. it never ends if you're just going to constantly seek vengeance. And that's why there's some justice that even in the end, I mean, Ayark realizes that they need to change their ways and they can't just keep raiding. That we're going to take steal a couple of moisture vaporizers to get yep. our own water. Evaporators, not vaporizers. vaporizers that would sorry. do the just, way wrong thing. I'm so, you know, they, he re, you know, they realize she's like, we need to make our own water. We can't just rely on stealing from the settlers, especially if their ranks are low. And it's all full circle because 
he ends up, instead of her getting to kill him out of vengeance, she ends up keeping him because he gets paralyzed and so he ends up becoming a property yeah. of the Tuscan clan. Pro- yeah, and his job up. is now to keep their vaporators running yeah. so that they aren't having to depend on raiding for water. Yeah, we do learn quite a bit about the Tuscans. I mean, does it conflict a little bit maybe with what we see in, you know, little, Book of Boba Fett? And maybe a slightly, but not that much. But they did actually make parts of it canon as well. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. Tuscans' rites of passage was written down in the... Uh, from a certain point of view book story so technically, titled yeah, technically the character of Aark is canon yep. at this point. Yeah, She's even listed as being in A New Hope. The yeah, I mean, Tuscan who stayed with the Banthas. Yeah, I mean really this story could be more or less taken as is and re- reinserted into the canon without any contradictions that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be nice, I mean, but we know Kenobi's not going to go this way. Well, no. We, well, I mean, there's nothing to say that. I mean, it's that really... That didn't happen before yeah, the events of Kenobi? Nothing so at all to still, say that. Yeah. Which would be nice to just, you know, we don't have to always contradict legends or the EU continuity. We can keep it around. Right, and even if they didn't want, did want, I don't know, they could still include it into the Kenobi thing. Just even as a passing mention that, oh yeah, yeah, he helped out Annalene or he's visited the claim. It's under new management. And then we'd be like, yeah. oh yeah, because Annalene left. And Exactly. I mean, there's, yeah. I, that would be such a nice little touch to just give that nod and be like, yeah, we, you know, those are, they talk about Easter eggs in Kenobi. These are the Easter eggs I'm looking for, not let's Stuff bring in kind of yeah, big characters. Make because... this legend story into something that had already happened. Yeah. And why not? Why not? And then you can just always, you know, you don't have to necessarily, you know, acknowledge that yes, this exact story. But if you put that little nod in there, you could say, well, yeah, it's quite possible that's what happened, right? It could even be one of the stories that leads the Inquisitors there, the trail of the Jedi who had to do good. Exactly. I, that I mean, would they could have even really gotten nice. the information from Annaline out could in the be. world and been like, oh, so there was a suspicious time there on Tatooine about uh, 10 years ago when the Jedi went into hiding, huh? Yeah. It would be a really cool way to include that, I think. Oh, I agree. And another thing I really like about this book is the way it handles, to bring it up, female characters. I mean, Annaline is an extremely strong character without mm-hmm. being, you know, out there and kicking butt kind of characters. It shows that I think the kind of strength that they kind of miss sometimes in modern day female characters, not to go too much into that. Yet at the same time, one of the twists of the book, you could say, is Aark is actually a female. <laughs> we don't really, mm-hmm. which is kind of a surprise to you because, you know, she's she is the leader of her tribe and she's a very strong character too, very smart character for a Tuscan because, I mean, she's not really well educated per se, but very wise and knows these things. It's, mm-hmm. it's really cool when, you know, you realize, oh, wait, this is actually... She's a female Tuscan leading this. And I I love the way they, you know, we always have to hear about how they didn't handle female characters well in Star Wars or, you know, they're not. This book handles it beautifully because you get all these different strong characters who are not necessarily just out there kicking butt, but strong in different ways. Like, Annalene is a very strong-willed character. Right, she's very smart. Very smart. Yes. Well, and it's it's funny because you also get to see two different, totally different parenting styles. Annalene is very protective of her children. Yes. She's... Free in a sense that she wants them to be able to follow their own dreams, but at the same time, she is very much mother hen. Yes. You know, she's she's going to try her best to keep her chicks in line. She's yeah, doing she her the best she can as a single parent. Especially with Jabe, who is kind of, you know, who's straying a little bit, we'll say, yeah. He doesn't know his place. He yeah. doesn't have a place here, so he's falling in with the wrong the crowd. Wrong crowd. Essential, yeah, essentially. And then you had, well, okay, then, well, then you had Oren Galt, and his style of parenting was way loose, and like one of his kids is even an alcoholic, so yeah, a young alcoholic. So yes. he's he's not fast. He, it's, it's it's perfect for his character. He doesn't take responsibility. No, not for at all. anything that goes wrong. It's always somebody else's very, fault. Always needs somebody else to blame, and he's very self centered. Very self centered. Yes. Unfortunately, he's passing it on to his children. Yes. Well, that's how it works, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas they get someone like Ayark and her parenting, and she's raising a a good and son who listens and does every you know and everything right, but unfortunately being the chief of the clan and in a time when Tuscan's clans are all coming together because they're so like small because yeah, they're been, dying out they're yeah. being like farmed out and stuff yeah you even get references to you know Attack of the Clones and Anakin's, Anakin's slaughtering right. yes yeah but not everyone is listening to her even though she is wise it isn't until the end when they've lost all hope when they've done it all the wrong way that they're finally like well I guess now we should listen <laughs> funny how that works yeah hindsight Insight. 2020, as they say. But no, I think the uh, fantastic book. I, I really like this book. It, 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 it's strange because it's nothing what I expected going into it. I always, I was, I remember the first time reading it thinking, you know, there's this bit of disappointment. Like, this isn't really even about Kenobi. But then you you get so into it that you realize it, it's, 
you, you get just enough of him, especially in this, mm-hmm. again, really critical time period where you have to handle the character very well, which cross our fingers for the Kenobi series coming up here. But no, I, I think it is, it's almost the perfect way to use these legacy characters because you're not really, the story is not about them, yet they add something to the story and you still learn something about these characters. It still challenges Kenobis in ways, you know, trying to stay hidden and trying to help people and, you know, the conundrum, though you don't personally get into it per se. I agree with everything you just said. Um, I guess for closing thoughts, I would I would suggest people read this, give it a try. It it is a little rough to read until you get back to Kenobi because he's what you're waiting for. So those first fifty pages after the prologue can be a little a little daunting. Yeah. Because they're just trying to set up to paint the picture of the scene we're going into. Yeah. But once once he's inserted and you know where you're going forward, I thought it was a great read. Even with us talking all these spoilers, I would yeah, still we, go ahead and read it. It's still it. a good read. There's still even a it, lot yeah. of stuff in there. Very good story, yes. And I'm really hoping that in the Kenobi series, we get some sort of reference. Just a nod, yeah. Even a reference to the claim. The store, that you know, the general store, cafe. Yeah. Or you could, you know, this at one point, Kenobi can mention, you know, this woman, Annaline, that I once knew, you know, mm-hmm. until she moved away. It's all it takes. It's all it all takes. All it takes to keep, some, keep those EU fans of... Happy, for, a little happy, I guess not. Right, because now we can rationalize to say that the stuff in this book did happen. Yes. All right, well, I guess that's all we got for you this time. So take to the comments below. Tell us, did you enjoy this style of video? And if you did, you can check out my other channel. We do videos similar to this almost daily. I'm on that daily. channel a lot. Yeah, she's, it is our channel. I shouldn't call it my channel. It is our channel. We discuss Star Wars, other things all the time. Lots Have of news. A, Lots of news. That's where most of the news videos that I used to do have gone over to because it's, I think it's more entertaining to do it. it, is that kind of style. Either way, leave your comments below. Tell us if you've read Kenobi, what you think of the book, or if you're now interested to read it. Whatever the case may be, again, leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.